Welcome brothers to uh, our next part of the uh, the Chronicles of the Children of Aranak. We're going to read the first chapter and maybe share a few things. Uh, my name is Michael Clark. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ in Christian Fellowship. And uh, we'll start off with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that your spirit be with us as we, we studied the first chapter and uh, that you will speak to us through it. We will get something out of it, Lord. And at this time, we pray for what's going off in the Middle East that maybe the two countries will will have compassion on each other and, and uh, will cease this war. Think of those people that are suffering, that are losing homes and losing lives, and we, we pray for them. In Jesus' name I say these things, Amen. So, Chapter 1, Revelation given to Matthew Philip Gill using the Umram and Thoman presented where Matthew Philip Gill and Philip Andrew Gill and David Ralph Smith we translate chapter one the people of the light and you just bear with me with the names uh sometimes i can't pronounce them properly so here we go my name is jaranak son of ishna from the house of ishna i have been taught the gospel of christ and the almighty god by my father and mother but it is from my mother that I have learnt the greater understanding of humility, respect, love, and it is to her that I give thanks for the man I am today. I am the last living prophet of the people of light, and it is at the great and terrible time that I compel these sacred records from even as I speak now, war and famine do cover the whole land and remaining followers of Christ and the Almighty God have fled with me. The last in living prophet of the temple of the Almighty God on the plains of Shiron and it is here that my people intend to make their last stand against the invaders from the east. For it is my people that have stayed from the path of righteousness, and it is because of this that I do compile this record, so that one day people might learn from its mistakes. We have made for the Lord, as shown unto me his prophet, in the last days before his coming, that these sacred records will one day come forth. For I have seen a day I do tremble with great fear for the time in which I have seen you live. The Lord, the Almighty God, has promised me that his servants, that if you remain faithful and steadfast, the sacred history of my people, the people of light, will be placed in your hands and our history be known once again to all the children of God. As it is possible that some future age this part of the earth will again be inhabited by, the, by those led by the Almighty God, then a history And a history of its present inhabitants would be value unto them. So I would I proceed to write one I deposit this record in a box made by my own hands to keep it safe until it shall come unto you at some future time, and that it may witness that I have given the sufficient account of my life 
and of the people. Dealings with God and our arrival upon this land, which I have taken from a larger manuscript, dealing with the religious history of my people and their relationship with God, a portion of which I have deposited with this history. Now I lay down these twenty-four plates, the history of my people, that I say unto you that were once a mighty and great people, willing to listen to the voice of their prophet and the voice of God. To understand my people, we must go back to their origins and the place from whence they sprang. And now I record history of my people. For behold, it is a time of great wickedness upon the whole earth, but pit the people of Aranach do follow the footsteps of the prophet Aranach and do heed his words. They keep the commandments of the Almighty God and they do worship him with one heart and one spirit. But their land remains a wicked land and the people of the plains of Shinar have taken upon themselves to open their whole land to build a mighty tower unto the Lord. Behold, it is their wish to walk into the kingdom, the Almighty God, without humbling themselves. The prophet Aranat did a mighty man in structure, went before the Lord and offered up a sacred prayer, saying, Almighty God, Lord of heaven and of the earth, Spare the people, forgive them for their wickedness. Pour out the Spirit upon their hearts, that they might have a great and mighty change of heart, that they may kneel before thee of solemn, uh, solemn repentance for the wickedness they have done. As Aranach finished his prayer unto the people of the great pillar, of fire appeared before a great pillar of fire appeared before him and with stood the Lord of hosts at the very Saviour from within the pillar of fire spoke the Saviour and the Lord of hosts and he did speak to the prophet Aranach and Aranach did tremble before the Lord for the Lord would not st stay his hand. After Aranach had made his pr proposal to the Lord, the people, for the people, his heart grew sad and heavy. He knew if the people would not humble themselves and repent their wickedness, that the Lord would destroy them from off the whole of the earth. So, with a heavy heart, Aranach went unto his people and told them of this thing that the Lord had spoken him. Now the people of Aranach listened with great attention to the words that Aranach spoke to them. And there stood in the midst of the people one who was captain of all the army of the people. Behold, his name was Shibl Shiblon, and he did listen with great listening, and his heart was moved, and he spoke to the people. He said, I will go down with the great prophet Aranach, and I will teach with him repentance and hum humility, to the humility to the great tower builders, with one hand on my sword, and my one hand on the shoulder of the prophet, as we go forth with great authority, the power, and I will see for myself whether or not the Lord will stay his hand. Upon the next morning, Prophet Aranach and the captain of the army, Shiblon, did make the long walk to the plains of Shinar. Now they were walking for eight days, and they came upon a hill that opened 
that overlooked the valley and plains of Shina, and they they saw a great and mighty tower reaching above the clouds and into the sky, and it did fill the hearts with great fear, for they had never seen it like, and they feared for the people and what God would do unto them. Upon seeing the tower, the tower Aranat spoke unto the people at the tower, saying, You wicked, wicked people, you cannot buy or walk your way into heaven. You might humble yourself now before the God of heaven and earth does destroy you. Upon hearing this, the people of the plain of the valley of Shina began to shout, and ridicule and throw rocks and dirt and all manner of things towards the prophet and Shiblon. Now there was the word that the people said towards prophet Aranak and Shiblon, We do not need a prophet, for we have a king. Our king has promised that in the coming days we will walk with God in heaven. Do not need to humble ourselves before God, for we have all the things we need to enter into his kim kingdom. For instance, the mighty tower, and our fine clothing, and our mighty storehouse, and our money. After the people had finished shouting and screaming these words, the prophet Aranak and his companion Shiblon made their way to the heart of the great city and to the base of the tower in the great city named after the great hunter and mighty king Nimrod. Upon seeing the great tower in the might and wicked city of our city, Aranak knew his heart why the Lord would not stay his hand. Uh, the people were wicked and liked being wicked and they would not change their ways of their hearts. Shiblon then spoke to the prophet Aranak, saying, <laughs> My prophet, let us go down to the friends who are camped by the river Mo Moak on the west, and let us speak to Mahonri, and let us see if he spoken to the Lord about the same thing and wickedness of the people of China at the city of Nimrod. With this, Aranok and Shim Shimlon took their walk to the camp of Mahonri. Upon seeing Mahonri, they did embrace him, for he took too was a prophet of the Most High God, and he did lead them to his camp by the side of the river, which is called Moak. Upon entering the town of Mahonri, he asked them to sit, and they relayed their tale of the people of Nimrod. Upon hearing this, Mahonri said to Aranak, I too have been to the city of Nimrod, and I too have seen wickedness there, and my people sank also, for the wickedness was great, and the people would not listen. Upon hearing these words, Aranak asked Mahonri to go with him and Shiblon to the city of Nimrod, to once again call the people to repentance. At the rise of the sun the next day, Aranak Shiblon Mahonri and his brother Jerod did take their journey to the city of Nimrod. Now when they, when they entered the city, there began a great storm, and the whole earth shook beneath their feet. And Aranak looked and saw that great tower did sway from to and fro, side to side, and begin to fall. Shiblong, being a mighty man, took hold of Aranat and forced him into a great hole 
and did shield him from the destruction. Aranak, upon the upon this, prayed to the Lord, asking for protection from the destruction about them. O oh Lord, hear my words, hear the words of thy prophet, protect the lives of my people and my friends. People, this I pray thee, Lord, protect us. Upon the ending of the prayer, Shibalon looked out around him, but could not see, for the air was filled with blackness and dust. Shiblon heard a voice calling and crying, but could not make out the tongue. The Lord moved upon Aranak and his uh, thoughts of the Holy Spirit that the language of the people of Nim had been cursed. Aranak knelt down with Shibalon and offered a great prayer to the Lord of hosts, saying, O Lord, thou art great and wonderful, and although your anger is great, I ask that you may preserve the language of my people and also the language of our friends and their people, for this is the language of the first parents, and we do not wish to lose that and all its meaning. We pray this, Lord, with the power of all the priesthood. Amen. Aranak, having made his prayer to God, knew though his, his faith and power of the holy priesthood that the Lord had spared his people and spared, and spared the people of his friends. Mahonri and he, he knew that the Lord had spared the integrity of their language. And now Aranak and Shiblam were moved by the Holy Spirit to leave the plains of Shina and all the confusion and destruction and take their journey home to their people. As they journeyed home, their hearts become heavy and sad for they knew the people at the great tower had not humbled themselves, and Aranat became worried for his own people, for he knew that not all the people were righteous, and he worried that the Lord, although he had spared his people and their language, would destroy them if they would not humble themselves to the words he would speak to them. So that's the end of chapter one, and uh, yeah, we just looked to that. Uh, well, I have to get my other, my other phone, just bear with me. So these people were at the Tower of Babel, and uh, Let's just look at something I've, I've looked up about that. Uh, so the Tower of Babel is a story from the Bible found in the book of Genesis, chapters 11, verses 1 to 9. According to the story, after the great flood, humanity spoke a single language and settled in the land of Shina. H. and Mesopotamia, I mean, that is, they decided to build a city and a tower with its top reaching to heavens to make a name for themselves and prevent them being scattered across the earth. However, God observed their actions and he decided to confound their language so they would not understand one another causing them to stop building the city. Consequently, the people were scattered over the face of the earth, and the city was named Babel, Babylon. Also, it was there that the Lord confused the language for the whole world. 
the Tower of Babel story has been interpreted in various ways, often seen as a symbol of human pride and the result in divine intervention to humble humanity and spread different cultures and language across the world. So I guess that with that as well, it's like uh, the Book of Mormon, the people started from there, from uh, from the Tower of Babel. I want to go back and look at some of the stuff, some of the prayers we had in in this in this chapter. So it talks about God Almighty. O Lord, art great and wonderful, and although you anger is great, I ask that you may preserve the language of our people and also language of my friends in the pig, for this is the language of the first parents, and we do not wish to lose all its meaning. So there's many prayers in there, and let's see if we can find the other one. So this is uh this is verse sixteen from the people Almighty God of heaven and of the earth, spare the people, forgive them, for their wicked pours out the spirit upon their hearts, that they might have a great and mighty change of heart, that they may kneel before thee in solemn repentance for the wickedness. So this one stands out to me because we we're living in a wicked time. Uh, well, that's how I see it. We're living in a wicked time. And people are, 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 are one-minded on money and wealth. But you can't take that with you. And, that, and that this prayer is trying to... We need to pray this prayer for people nowadays. So I'm going to say it as a prayer. Almighty God, the Lord of heaven and of the earth, spare the people people living now spare the people forgive them for their wickedness pour out the spirit upon their hearts that they might have a great and mighty change of heart that they may kneel before thee in solemn repentance for the wickedness they have done and that's for all of us yep and I say these things in Jesus Christ Amen So we're living in a time of a war, and uh, what's going on in the Middle East is, uh, is I think, uh, is talked about in Revelations, and uh, so I've enjoyed Chapter One of the the Chronicles of Aranak, and. Uh, we pray you can join with us next time. So let's finish off with a prayer. Uh, if you know, know more about the fellowship, uh, it's the ch church cjccf.org and you can find the website. And uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, f we thank you for the scriptures we have and we thank you for this scripture that you have brought amongst us on earth and given to Matthew Gill to translate. And uh, we ask that you bless his family and his church, the Restored Branch, and all the rest of the Restoration Branches. You bless them. That we know at this time that we should prepare for the what's going to come and that if we stay in our faith, in our belief in Jesus and full of him, and learn about him, how he was, and pray about it, and keep our commandments with God that you'll keep us safe. We thank you, like I said, we thank you for these scriptures and the many other scriptures, the Book of Mormon, and lots more scriptures that are brought to us. We pray for those ones that we don't know about yet, that you will bring some more to us, and it will open our hearts and minds. So we thank you for this time, 
And I say these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. See you next time.